Today, I'm starting my journey to turn this old shop into my dream shop. And it starts with ripping everything out so we can have a clean slate. I found a ton of issues, some small and some pretty darn big. And also I found some things that we're not gonna talk about. So this is just a standard metal pole barn, and at the end of the day, I want everything to look like this so it's nice and clean, and we can actually frame up some new walls. If you saw the property tour video, you know that this office was actually a deer butchering room. So I feel like we need to really make sure that we keep this deer poster. And we've definitely been seeing some weird things around here. If you see any deer ghosts in the video, let me know down in the comments how many you end up seeing. But I'm gonna pull this down, and we're definitely gonna find a spot for that in the new shop. We do have a lot of good material up here on the wall, so I'm gonna be taking all that down and trying to save as much as I can. We're gonna have a ton of OSB and probably quite a few two by fours as well. <laughs> I found some hidden goodies up here and I was taking off this next piece and uh, almost got cracked in the head by a grease gun. So uh, yeah, there's that. All right, we'll keep going. All right, <laughs> uh, some more hidden goodies. It's like a boat. Uh, Signal light. Ooh. A water pump repair kit. I'm like a bag of gold. That's what I'm looking for. This is just absolutely disgusting. There's like a thousand years of rat poop, but I'm definitely masking up because uh, I think you should be breathing in rat poop, guano, whatever else I'm gonna find in here. I can't wait to see what's in the office walls. <laughs> <laughs> we found what we were looking for. Probably gonna have to uh, blur this out for uh, those playing at home. Oh my gosh, yes, definitely. This is uh, from February 2003, issue number 22 of, I, I can't even read the name of the magazine. Yes. <sighs> naughty, naughty. Now before we jump into the office, I wanna take down these shelves and I wanna move one section of them back over into the breezeway because we're gonna be pulling some stuff out of the office there and it'll be nice to have a little spot to put them back there and we can have them under the cover of the breezeway. All right, we didn't have any good enough names for this guy, so we're not keeping them. What is going on here? All right. I am done with this. It's gonna break out the big guns. We're just gonna saw these things in half. <laughs> ah! Oh, I didn't cut the top one. <laughs> I can't use them now, but they're out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So found another set of deer antlers behind the wall. They're still ranging around here somewhere. But this whole thing, if I could sum up the entire construction of the shop in one picture, it would be this right here. I mean, honestly, doesn't every joint need five screws and five nails? <laughs> Second set of shelves, it's kind of like your second kid. First one, you take a lot of care and time and try to get everything right. The second one, you just hope they don't die or that you don't die. All right, with all these walls getting exposed, I'm really starting to get excited and really starting to feel the whole width and size of the shop with less clutter around here. And this is 30 feet wide, so it's almost twice as wide as my current shop, which is about 18 feet. So. Let's call it 66% bigger. Honestly, guys, it is crazy when I think about just having a space like this and compared to where I started. I had my first shop over 20 years ago. It was in Cincinnati in this little house. It was a 1907 build and the walls were literally stacked stone with like mortar put in there. So there's water in there all the time and it was moist and the ceiling was like seven and a half feet tall. So going from that and then my next shop was in another basement and that one was definitely better eight foot ceilings this time. Then my next shop, I think eight and a half foot ceilings, which was great, also in a basement. But then when we moved down to Nashville, I finally got into the garage shop that I'm in today before coming here. And just looking around here and seeing this and seeing how far I've come and the journey to get here has been awesome. So I'm so excited to be here and have you guys along with me. 
But as you can see, I've already done this SketchUp and I have modeled out actually every single piece of lumber in here because, you know, that's what I do. I'm, I'm a nerd. Uh, so it's gonna be really fun to just play around with it and I would love to hear from you what are your best shop layout tips and tricks or what do you wish you had have done that you didn't do when you're building out your shop? Because I'm right in the midst of that, of planning, and I wanna just absorb as much as I can. So let me know what you guys think. But now I can start unloading stuff from the office and I'm gonna be interested to see what we find. If that little magazine was any indication, we'll see if we find their other secret stash. <laughs> Let's get going. All right, after some coercing, I did get that down. <laughs> I also found the stash. Honey, have you been drinking beer? No, you'd seen the cases if I was drinking beer. Hiding uh, beer cases, I guess that's what we're doing. <sighs> okay, you've got to be kidding me. The love for nails, I have never seen anything like it. Uh, the cabinet is actually screwed in, but also nailed in. I, I've never seen a cabinet nailed to the wall. <sighs> Let's see if we can get this out. All right, we're just gonna pry this off the wall. Pray it doesn't knock over the camera. Ooh. All right. <laughs> now, amazingly, we do have uh, cleaning supplies and they're unused. I think we know why. What I'm really excited about is the AudioVox 5 CD changer. All right, let's see if this works, first of all. Oh, stand by, there we go. Bye -bye. We definitely have some sound. We do have the storage for six extra CDs in the cases. Gotta love that. Let's see if it'll play. I can hear it spinning. It's not playing. It's probably scratched. I'll have to figure that out later because we need to know what CD is in there. <laughs> the antenna with the aluminum foil and the bolt. <sighs> so good. All right, we've got everything off the wall here and uh, got it all taken down and cleaned up. It's just, this place is so dirty. But now I'm gonna get this freezer and the fridge out of the way and I went ahead and cleaned half of the freezer. I'll let you guess which half I cleaned. <laughs> yeah, that looks real nice. Oh. <laughs> oh, this place is so disgusting. So next time you see a nasty fridge, don't throw it out, just give it some elbow grease and hope nothing's rotten on the inside, which this one was fine. Now we do have some water here, which is awesome. So we actually have two little sinks here because you know when you're butchering deer, you need two sinks and a little place apparently. Uh, and we also have this surface mounted electrical. So I'm gonna take care of all of this, get this out and hope that that shutoff valve actually works. Uh, and then we can be ready to take everything else down and start getting into the walls. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the water off to the shop and that's in the crawl space, which was filled with mold, if you remember from the last video, but we did have that taken care of. And now, check it out. It is nice and clean in there. All of that mold is gone. A little insulation work still needs to be done, but it is looking so much better. And now we won't uh, get black lung. Just gonna start cutting this out and hope for the best. This pea trap is absolutely disgusting. Oh, I think that's uh, I think that's deer guts. Oh, ah. Oh. ah. <laughs> that's gonna empty that. This smells horrible too. Oh gosh. Oh no. <laughs> Should have thought about the fact that this would have to drain. Actually, tilt this on its back. There we go. All right. Five pans worth of water and uh, I think we're good now. That little hot water here was absolutely disgusting. I think he had told me he hadn't run it in many years. So that water was just stale and stagnant, but I'm taking the power out to it. And again, I don't think anything should surprise me at this point, but this is like a hint of a electrical connection. <laughs> I have not unscrewed this at all. <laughs> this is just how it was. I feel like I could breathe on that the wrong way and that's gonna come out or arc and set the place on fire. Whoa. <laughs> there was still a lot in here. <laughs> Can 
All right, so I'm taking the last outlet off of the interior wall of the office over by the desk and I'm tracing it over here. I was looking for a junction box and instead I found this. I believe that's what they call the redneck junction box, which is just a big wad of wires electrical taped together. <laughs> oh my gosh. So these wires are charred and so is the insulation vapor barrier. All right, this is uh, coming down not a second too soon. Last thing to go before we start ripping down the walls will be the old elevator door. And I already took off the little stop up here. This thing is probably gonna be super heavy. I'm just gonna roll it off and kinda hope for the best. Oh, that's heavy. This door's staying here forever. <laughs> Two layers of quarter inch thick sheet. All right. Let's move this thing out. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, what? Should we keep this or should we just get rid of it? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this thing is super cool. Like, it, it's really cool, but where are we going to put it and what are we going to do with it? You're asking right. like logical questions here. I do not like this. This, <laughs> uh, no, that is a great point though. This is probably something that uh, I will hold on to for 10 or 20 years and then uh, finally. Get rid of it at some point. Uh, we're not gonna have any doors in here to open, really. All right, guys, <laughs> I need help. My wife is uh, asking very valid questions and we need some ideas for this door. Let me know in the comments what you think the best idea is and maybe we can save it. One idea is to sell it. Just get the garage door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yet another saga. We're trying to get the door open and having a bit of an issue. What is that hitting? Uh -huh. All right, that other door is actually pretty good. This one, I don't know what's going on with it. It's all whacked out. So I'm going to go ahead and repair this real fast and just give it a little tune up because we got to get in and out of this door since all the cabinets are stacked up over there. Like everything else, this has not been maintained and it looks really dry. It looks like it needs to be lubed up as well as some alignment issues. The sponsor of today's video is WD-40 brand. They've been a longtime sponsor of the channel. So I've got some WD-40 specialist white lithium grease and I'm just going to go through here and just soak down everything, make sure it's all nice and lubed up. So the white lithium grease is great for applications like this for metal on metal and the little bearings are metal and the rails are metal. So it is a rust inhibitor and it also just gives you long lasting lubrication. So this is perfect for tuning up garage doors. Now the white lithium grease is great, but of course we have the WD-40 multi-use product. This is the one we all know and love. I definitely brought this one along because if anything is squeaky or just is not moving, this one is great. And then another one that's great for demo work is the WD-40 Specialist Penetrant. And this is if you have any locked nuts or bolts, this one works great. So WD-40 brand has a whole lineup of products. I'm gonna have a link down below in the description to these and some of my favorites. So you can go check them out. A big thank you to WD-40 brand for sponsoring today's video. Definitely better. All right, so now we can finally start ripping down the office. I'm actually gonna start with the exterior so I can pull that down, remove all the insulation, and then I'll have light inside because if I start on the inside, then I'll have to turn off the lights and it'll be super dark in there. So we'll do the sides, then probably move to the top and go from there. Do a little time lapse, me ripping everything down. All right, with all the sheathing off, now I can start taking it down the insulation here. And I'm not messing around this time. Last time I dealt with insulation, I was itching for like a week and it was horrible. So I've got the whole Timex suit on. We're gearing up, man. I'm, just say what you want. I'm gonna not be itching tonight. Oh my God, I am soaking wet from my head to my toes. Uh, just, oh, it's like I was trying to lose weight again in high school during a wrestling match or something. Uh, I bailed out because my eyes were starting to burn and uh, it was just so hot up there. So I only got a couple rows up at the top, but man, dealing with insulation is no joke. Whew. Try it again tomorrow. 
So I started off today by ripping off the OSB on this wall and I found something I can only describe as the mouse motel. I don't know. Check this out. <laughs> This whole bay of insulation is just completely eaten up by mice. It looks like one of those ant farms when you look at it from the side and you can see all the tunnels. And there's some more over here, there's holes. So if there was any hope of saving this insulation, definitely not. And as I start pulling it out, I think the odds are pretty high that we're gonna find Stuart Little. So we'll see where he's been hiding. So I'm gonna finish up this wall and I'm gonna suit back up to get rid of the insulation. Oh my gosh! Woo! That sucked worse than yesterday. Yeah, that ceiling plywood is still on there because I need to take the lights down. But uh, for now, I gotta get some water before I pass out. All right guys, time to rip down the ceiling. Oh. Just like a bland. All right, we got all the ceiling out, and so now I can start taking out those upper joists. And do not do what I did. Uh, you know, get two people. I don't know. I don't know the right way to do it, but I almost killed myself like three times from those things falling down. It was, it was not cool. <laughs> but we are starting to get quite a load of OSB, and I'm starting to move it all around. And I'll tell you what, this little panel carrier from Craig is awesome. Highly recommend one of these if you're going to be moving a whole bunch of sheet goods makes it a lot easier. But next up, I'm gonna take out the ceiling joist and then start pulling down the walls. Let's get to it. That was awesome. Pushing down this wall really has opened up this space. And man, I can't wait to get these down and just have everything done. But I just sometimes wonder, how did I get here? How did I <laughs> did this for my job? And I wanna thank you guys for helping support the whole journey and allowing me to do content creation for full time. And that's one of the questions I actually get asked the most is how did I get into this and how do you do it? We actually have a course coming up that's gonna help you figure that out. If you're interested, you can go to a little link down below in the description, thecreatorcourse.com forward slash fix this build that. It's gonna be me and four of my friends who you know, uh, they're all up here somewhere. And uh, we're gonna just tell you how we all became content creators and basically cut out the learning curve for you if you're interested, go check it out. All right, let me get the rest of these walls down. Oh man, guys, this is getting rough. I just took this wall down and it looks really bad right there. So here's the normal spacing of these uh, support beams. You can see this one does not follow here. And then this one is actually raised up. And then this one is completely missing. But the part that's so troublesome is this. Look at this. Yes, there is uh, nothing there. That is rotten wood. I was wondering why this was shaking so much. So yeah, this whole wall is basically not supported over here. I was all ready to wrap up the video with a little victory lap, knocking this thing down. <laughs> now I've got to jump back in the suit, get all this insulation out of there, which I didn't know was there, and then just see how bad it is. But uh, spirits are a little bit down. Nothing that I don't think can be fixed, but man, I was not, I was not expecting that. So, oh well, surprises that you find in an old workshop.
Well, that was a complete disaster, and I'm gonna clean that up later. But I did find something out of the old CD player. Jimmy Buffett, greatest hits songs you know by heart. Jimmy, rest in peace. I hope you are in that cheeseburger paradise. If you want to see the full property tour, I've got the video queued up for you right there. A big thank you to the FDBT Builders Club. I'm Brad. Get out there and build something awesome.